the the Wi Wi Fi. Okay. <coughs> The board of County Commissioners now in session. We'll have a prayer. Brother David, would you mind come saying a prayer? Follow with the pledge. Let us just bow our heads. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for our County Commission meeting. We thank you, Father, for the wisdom and insight that you're giving our commissioners this morning to make the best decisions for Franklin County. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I have the judge to come in where Mr. Rick Watson in, District 1. Welcome to the board, Commissioner Welcome Watson. Board. Thank you. Welcome. We have the department head this morning, Mr. Howard Neighbor. Good morning, Commissioner. Good How y'all doing? Just got a couple I want to welcome the new oh, commissioner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I went by uh, the bills. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I meant the minutes. I was, I was, <laughs> you have approved of the minutes? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We have four sets of minutes. Oh, right. Okay. August, yes you do, August 18th, mm -hmm. uh, September 15th, September 21st, and September 30th. Let my motion reflect that it's four sets of minutes okay. on those dates. You guys were busy last month. Okay. Got the problem. I, I met myself. Reflect all of it. Payment of the bills? So moved. Second. Have a motion second on the floor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Hey, Mr. Chairman, the bill list includes that extra check that was cut late for the subsidy for the annual so, Okay. Okay, just want to make sure that's on the record. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Howard, neighbor. Morning, Commissioner. How y'all doing? Morning. I want to welcome the new commissioner. Look forward to working with you, so. Thank you. And we got our new machine in, too, Friday, so. Good, good, good. We started in East Point, and we're going to go through the county with it, so. Where'd you start at? East Point. Okay. Just in case of any kind of problems or trouble, we would have it right at the shop. So, but so far, we run it yesterday. Everything worked good. So, anybody have anything for Howard? I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Howard, mm -hmm. um, I know D. Whip Polis is not here, and he's our mosquito control man. Mm -hmm. um, have we quit spraying mosquitoes? No, ma'am. I think he's still spraying. Because I mean that I I'm getting complaints out the door with. Uh, uh, complaints about mosquitoes being okay. bad, especially with this recent rain we had. We had about a week or two back. Okay. So, but kind I kind of check with D. Witt and see. I will. I'll check with him when I get out of here and see if. I know Mr. Eddie had, I don't know, had issues, and I think Jonathan Creamer took his spot for spraying, so okay. they still spraying. They was in Caribou one day last week. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You got anything else for Howard? Thank you, Howard. Y'all have a good one. Solid waste, Mr. Fonda Davis. Good 
Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Uh, uh, just to update on the radios, we're still working on it. You all instruct the last board meeting to go out and, and try to uh, find some better price, so we're still searching on it. Also, as far as Park and Rec, the Barroom and Park project, we're getting ready to uh, move forward on that. So the provisions, the two provisions that need to come out where we can install the new playground equipment, uh, we're going to start taking them down this week. That's, that's all I have for the board this morning. Anybody have anything for finding? I got a couple of things. Okay. I want to say the first day of soccer was, uh, was good. I enjoyed it. It was cool. Right. We got to play the first games, and the little children just enjoyed it so much. I just loved watching them. And thank you for all your work that you put into the soccer fields and stuff like that, too, Fonda. And thank, you're, you're thank the employees. The oh, other yeah. thing is, if you'll remember last month, month and a half ago, we uh, closed up the recycling area for Lanark yes, Village. And I was out there last night, and some of the people were asking me to, and, and, and I'll ask you to, to do this. Uh, to put up an informational sign. Okay. Uh, they were not aware that they could bring their household garbage to the scales over here in East Point. Okay. And uh, like I told them, uh, it probably cost around two dollars and fifty cent for a little old bag of household yeah. garbage. That's correct. They didn't realize that. And so, if you would put an informational sign up there at the old recycling area, saying yes. what uh, what it cost for household garbage, where to take it and also where the recycling uh, containers are. We have one in Alligator Point at the ball point and you know, almost at the ball point, Alligator Point um, intersection. You have one at St. James out there, St. Right. James Golf Course out there is a recycling thing at the rehab yes, center. And then you have one in Carabell. So if you can put that information out there, then the people would be um, a little bit happier because okay. they thought we took away all the services and didn't give them anything. Okay. So, right. anyway, if you can do that, I appreciate it. Will do. Thank you, Fonda. Okay. Hey, I'm Brian Nail, Merchant. Pound is in Tallahassee, uh, Commissioners. And so I, I have her report. She has three action items. The first one is she needs board approval uh, to sign an award letter for State Homeland Security Grant. It's a training and exercise grant in the amount of $11,000. There's no match with this grant. So moved. Second. Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Her second action item is also your approval of the chairman's signature and award letter for the Community Emergency Response Team, the CERT uh, grant in the amount of $5,720. This, this is a match grant that CERT team will match with in-kind services. So moved. Second. Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Motion carries. And she would like your approval to go out for RFP for contracts for the Resident Construction Mitigation Grant. Do I have a motion? Commissioners, this is a RFP to select contractors to perform the work, so they'll be doing some additional bidding later. You're just selecting the pool of qualified contractors okay. at, at the time. moment. If you take yeah, just action. RFPs. Yeah, just for RFPs, not yeah. qualifications, not, not proposals, RFQs. So it should be RFQs? RFQs. I'll let That's her know. what I was fixing to say when you said it was just to have a pool of them. Pool of You needed, you know, request for qualification. Okay, I'll let her know she's a change. Okay, so we've verbiage. changed it to RFQs. Yes, ma'am. With that, I'll make a motion to go ahead and do it. Second. second. Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Uh, 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 all opposed? Motion carries. Everything else is information <clears> items that uh, it's on your report. Thank you. Eric Lobstrand. Eric is away in training but, uh, for the university, but uh, his assistant, Jamie, is here. If you guys have any questions or comments that you need her to relate to him. I and I, I, his uh, report was not part of the agenda packet, but I gave you guys an individual copy. Are we uh, still moving forward as far as trying to get this building ready and has the contract been signed and that type? Might as well bring that up, sir. No, he's talking about the contract for the uh, extension. No, yeah, extension for, office down at the, no, we're still waiting for DEP we'll to get estuary. that to yeah. us. Here's the system, maybe she can control. tell us. Yeah, Jamie. Oh, okay. No estuary down at the end of the street. The What's going on? The yeah, the yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Yes, there, there's Jamie. Jamie can answer. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. <laughs> um, that's why she's here. Um, the last I got an update from Eric, um, they were writing MOUs and. Um, they were in contact, UF was in contact with DEP on um, a sublease, but as far as an update further than that, I, I really don't have one. I'll have to get with Eric and get back with you. 
But that's what that's what last time you heard anything was M O U. Yes, ma'am. Getting ready for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. It's Ann Birchwell, Franklin County Library. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Welcome, Commissioner Watson. Beginning Wednesday, October 7th at the East Point Branch, we will now offer free one-on-one -on -one basic computer classes for dummies. If you don't know how to turn on the computer or how to create an email account, we would be happy to help. Each session is one hour, and of course, it's always free. For the younger set, ages two and up, we offer Appy Hour, which is an interactive program uh, on Friday, October 9th from 3.30 to 4.30. The East Point Library has iPads for use, and we will be teaching about math train this, this particular month free program for the children and the big adults to learn how to use an iPad. On Tuesday, October 13th, herbalist Denise Williams will be facilitating a wild and edible and medicinal plants in Franklin County program at the East Point Branch. Some plants we encounter every day are actually edible and possibly beneficial to our health. For the Carabell Branch, uh, the Carabell Branch will be hosting Planting a Winter Garden on October 7th at 11 a.m. Les Harrison from the Wakulla Extension Agency will be the speaker for a special workshop. On October 14th, the Franklin County Health Department will be performing free blood pressure checks for Franklin County residents from one to three. At the Carabell branch, preteens and teens ages eight and up can go to a new program called Try New Things or TNT with Ms. Ren Rickerson. On Thursdays at 2 p.m., Ms. Tanya Chisholm, the branch manager, will be having a special program for babies at birth to three called Book It Baby or Bib. And uh, just as an aside, state aid requires a master degree librarian. I wanted to inform you that I have fulfilled the requirement and graduated from my master's program. Um, for my action item, in response to the loss of the amount of 21,000 from state aid to library's grant, and one sta staff person at the Carabell branch losing full-time status and going to part-time, I am forced to make a difficult decision. When I became the director of Franklin County Public Library, I was able to increase the hours of the libraries by 14 hours. This has been a nice advantage for the residents of Franklin County. We share in this problem because I want to keep both branches often open as often as possible. However, I do not have the staff now to keep the hours that we had. My proposed change would be to open at 9 a.m. as usual on Monday mornings at the Carabelle branch, but to close at 2 instead of 6, which would be a loss of four hours at the Carabelle branch. The part-time worker will continue to work on Mondays at the Carabelle branch. Both the branch manager and myself have appointments in Tallahassee for our children that have specific problems. Uh, Gulf County Libraries in Port St. Joe, was just on the news, have now cut their hours down to four days. This is a state problem. Uh, I just returned from a conference that was the American Rural Library Conference. It's going on across the country. When you lose state funding and you lose local funding, you can't keep the doors open as much. Well, and, and Miss Ann, you know, we, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. You know, we said during the budget cycle, you weren't here that day, but you knew that we, it was going on. This, the county has always relied on the state funding to fund the library. When they fund it, we fund it. If they don't fund it, you can't put it on the back of the county to be able to do this. And I understand what you're doing, and I, you know, I understand it. You mm -hmm. know, it's just one of them things that happen. I understand because the state cut the funding through the state aid. I understand. Know, uh, we can't help that, and I'm sorry, but I hope it works out. Well, I'm you know? going to be looking for funding in other areas. I am yeah. applying for grants. Um, it's all I can really do. But I do want to at least, I'm not cutting a whole day like I had proposed. I yeah. figure four hours is the best I can do. We're still open on Saturdays for people that work all week. Um, we still want to continue giving good services. But Miss Tanya can't run that library by herself. Can, can you, you can't work her during the week all four hours while Miss Sheila's there and transfer the four back to Monday? Miss Sheila? The, um, the lady at part time. Uh, well, what's going on is on Mondays at the other branch, we have someone doing outreach to the schools, which is another requirement. So that we've only got one person in East Point at the front desk, one person's out in the field, and Ren is going to work uh, part-time on Monday, but we're trying to give Tanya as many hours of the part-time that we can during the week to help Tanya, because they get busy. 
a lot of food stamp applications, and mm -hmm. that takes time. It's oh, manpower. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might uh, yes, read sir. about some of the other local uh, counties surrounding us, especially yes. Gulf County, and some of the issues that they were facing, and, and you know, with, with the budget surplus that the state had this year, I don't know why they. Uh, actually cut the library funding because it's not like they didn't have the money to fund the libraries but that's decisions made at a different level than here but we do appreciate all you do uh, for Franklin County and the citizens and just continue to strive I would encourage you to strive to do the best job you can that's all you can do with, with the, what you have to work with and yes, we do you. appreciate it we'll keep on and, and at the local legislative delegation last week I brought that's one of the issues I brought up was state aid funding Thank you very uh, much. And, and brought that up to Sandra Montford and Representative Halsey Bashirs to, to look at keeping it at the same level at least. Right. Uh, you know, so anyway, and if you need us to support you on a grant to, to help you out with a grant, you know, to support it. The problem is a lot of times these that. grants ask, they want sustainability. Yeah. I mean, they might give you the funds, but they want to see that the library yeah. can sustain it with, a, with someone. And if you don't have the people to do the, the grant, you don't get approved. Wow. So I can try my best, and I certainly will. But I just, so this would only be on Mondays for four hours. I just need you to approve that for me. So I will change the hours only at the Carabelle branch. East Point will stay open the full nine hours. All right, I have a motion. Well, we need a motion to, a motion amend, to, to amend the, the hours. Amend the hours. Yes, to amend the hours. So, amend so move. Hour. So move. I have a second. Second. I have a motion to second on the floor. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Sam. Thank you, sir. Have a yes, sir. <clears throat> Why are our library premises tobacco free? Uh, hey, would you come forward to the mic State where everybody your, can hear you? State your name, State right. your name, please. My name is Dan Rosier, and I'm an advocate for the children of Franklin County. I would like to know why aren't our premises in the library tobacco free? They actually are. Um, I was notified that there was a problem, that we had patrons out front that we're smoking in front of the library we've now moved that out to the flagpole if there anyone would want to because they just they I think we should it. move it off the premises that would stop all of you and have have any of that stuff so I, that's what I would think okay. I think it should happen I would be okay with that okay thank you thank you so much Mr. Alex Senator Graham you come forward Congresswoman Congresswoman, <laughs> <event. laughs> Congress. we're, we're thinking ahead, Alex. We're yeah. thinking ahead. And uh, good morning. Good to see you all today. Congratulations, Commissioner. And I'd just like to remind you all the Congresswoman's office hours so will be starting at 11, uh, just over here at the courthouse. And we're here to help any of your constituents and the Congresswoman's constituents that have any issues with federal agencies or would like to let her know about any issues going on that, uh, that we can have some effect on. Okay. Are you still working on the problem that we had over in East Park? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, and let me ask you once again, I ask you every time. Yes, ma'am. What's the standing on the East Point channel being dredged? Since the last time that I spoke with you, I haven't been briefed on any changes. We need to move on that, Alex, if you don't mind, because we need to get something done. I'd like to see it dredged, you know. We got the permits. They just yeah. stay there. We just need the money. We need the right. money. And uh, the Congresswoman does do a lot of work with the Army Corps of Engineers and have spoken with them on several occasions about it. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Any questions for Alex? <clears throat> Thank you, Alex. Thank you all for bringing in this nice fall weather for my drive in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Pinky Jackal, Supervisor of Election. She's on the phone. Hold on a second. Ma'am. Supervisor, can you hear me? That would help, Michael. I'm sorry, Supervisor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can All you right. hear me? Yeah, they can hear you. Put the mic okay. down. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I am in Clay County at uh, Supervisor Training, and it's, uh, we thank you for hearing us today, and I want to say welcome to your new Commissioner. And, uh, I, Rick, I wish you the very best, and I, you take good care of my seat for me, and uh, I know you'll do You'll do real good. So thank y'all for hearing us today. You, who's going to address this? You going to do the addressing? Uh, I'm sorry, I could not hear you. I say, are you going to address us with what you want? Um, I think uh, 
Mr. Schuler was going to speak to you first about an item he has on his report, and then we'll follow up with Mr. Schuler. Uh, Kerry, my uh, chief deputy, will follow up when he finishes his comments. Chairman's pleasure, Commissioner. Um, why don't you tell us what you want, Ms. Jackal? Well, you're the one that's needing it, uh, what you need. Well, actually, the reason that uh, Michael and I had discussed yesterday about uh, the need for the chairman's signature on the contracts with the state is actually a legal technical issue. And so uh, what he'll be talking with you about then is about the um, grant that the state is making available to some of the rural counties for the purchase of new ballot counting equipment. And this comes to us through a HAVA grant. It's in the amount of approximately $83,000 for Franklin County. But along the way of us accepting the funds and participating in this grant, there are some conditions that uh, Mr. Schuler has been reviewing and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Schuler now if he will please uh, describe that to you. And Mr. Chairman, um, what you'll be hearing from him is the need for the equipment and the um, technicalities of signing the contract and obtaining the funds from the state of Florida. And I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Mr. Chairman, okay. Supervisor, thank you. Good morning. Um, I've given, I've spoken to each of you individually about the, this equipment, and I've also uh, given to you a little memorandum this morning that, that explains it in more detail. So if you have any questions for me, I'll be glad to address this in more detail. But the long story short is uh, the financing arrangement from the seller, the vendor of this equipment, is a financing arrangement that we cannot make use of. Uh, it is unlawful in the state of Florida for them to require us to give them a security interest in the property. So what I've recommended to you, I looked at two different options. One is your capital outlay money just for an outright purchase, but you have insufficient funds in your capital outlay account. Um, therefore, the only option remaining to you if, if the board elects to move forward, and I am recommending that you move forward and purchase the equipment because we do have this Help America Vote Act, the HAVA grant that the supervisor just mentioned to you, uh, available. The state will not guarantee the full five years of funding, even though they have in hand the full five years of funding uh, for all 12 of the fiscally constrained counties that are receiving these grant funds. That's We've done the best we can as a group of county attorneys working with uh, the Division of Elections. It's actually uh, the lead attorney on this has been uh, Ross Macbeth out of Highlands County. He's done most of the heavy lifting in dealing with the Division of Elections. Uh, and his supervisor in Highland County is, is also going to be working with ES&S on another uh, pricing point issue that I will talk to you about in a moment. But the, the, the where you are now, the, the equipment that you have, um, it remains certified, but you have a great opportunity through grant funding uh, to replace that 15-year-old equipment that we've already had trouble with in your last election. Um, and Commissioner Sanders is shaking her head. She was there. She remembers those issues. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the modems, uh, we had two uh, modems that failed, uh, one at Alligator Point, one here in Apalachicola, and you have a group of people uh, in the state of Florida who were warning their election results and we had to sit and, and twiddle our thumbs for well over an hour because not because of any fault of the poll workers but because it's just a, such a long distance to travel from Alligator Point back to the supervisor's office here in Apalachicola. So I think moving forward to purchase the new equipment is reasonable and I'm recommending that you, you, you uh, do purchase that but you will need to go get a loan from a local bank uh, to finance the purchasing of this equipment because we cannot make use of the financing from ES and S. Uh, we as a group of 12 county attorneys did negotiate with uh, ES and S and they did make changes on a number of the documents uh, but they would not change the, any of the, uh, the financing arrangements. So moving forward we would need to contact a local bank and obtain a loan on commercially reasonable terms at an interest rate which it, you would expect as an interest-free governmental agency is probably going to be less than 5%. Um, and then in addition to the equipment, which I believe the HAVA grant will pay for in the amount of $83,000, uh, 
there's an additional expense for uh, equipment, modems, and uh, computer software to upgrade us from your current uh, um, supervisors. Is Unisys is the name of Unity. the existing software? It's Unity. Unity. Mm -hmm. uh, that will upgrade from the old software, Unity, to the new software uh, uh, called Electionware, which uh, from talking to my conversations with uh, two of the staff persons at the, the Division of Elections yesterday, uh, although this purchase is not mandatory, they are strongly encouraging it because the grant funds are available. Uh, but they put some non-binding language into the MOU, which states that they are that they anticipate having this funding made available to us. They just won't bind themselves to that. Um, then, uh, so <clears throat> that additional expense is about twenty-nine thousand dollars. So your total on the loan would be in, in the general amount of one hundred and thirteen thousand uh, dollars. It would be an unsecured loan. Uh, not to exceed a seven-year term. I, I spoke to a local bank and they would make that loan available to the county on either a five-year term or a seven-year term. I arbitrarily chose uh, a, a seven-year term just in the event that the grant funding should disappear. It gives you a longer period of time to make the payments. And if you do get the full five years of grant funding, uh, then you can pay it off early. Uh, so the, in addition to the things I've just discussed, you would also need to um, consider waiving your, your bid policy, um, although state policy would, would not require, or state law would not require you to bid this purchase. You have your own local bid policy, which would require uh, competitive bidding on any uh, purchase in it. Was it $10,000, Mike? Yes. Yes. Is that it? It is. Uh, in excess of $10,000. In this case, given the timing of trying to purchase this equipment, get it in place in time for the presidential primary in March. I think it would be reasonable to declare this as a, an emergency exception to your bid policy and therefore waive it. Um, that is a very long discussion of, of a fairly complicated scenario because we're, we're getting a grant, we're trying to get the elections equipment and software, but that, those are the, at least the three moving parts we're trying to put together. Okay. Can I ask? Commit, I, mean, I knew I was going to. Ms. Jackal, I'm sorry. Yes, I have it. Are you are you satisfied with what uh, Attorney Sheeler has came up with? Um, yes, I am. I, but there's one question I have that I heard him say. Uh, Mr. Sheeler, are you proposing that the county borrow the funds for the hardware purchase as well? I heard a hundred thousand yes, dollar uh, figure that you spoke. Is that correct? Or are you suggesting that we only borrow the money that would be reimbursed? by the state from the HAVA grant funds and the other $29,000 be expensed through the county's capital outlay. Um, good point, Supervisor. I had suggested the $113,000 loan because that was the total of the, uh, the both the tabulation equipment, which the grant pays for, and the $29,000 and the additional equipment that the mm -hmm. grant does not pay for. Um, that would be at the board's election. I mean, you, you certainly could take money, and you do have the $29,000 available in capital outlay if that would be the board's pleasure. Yeah, that would, um, that would be at the uh, pleasure of the board, you know, the direction they want to go on that. But Commissioner Sanders, yes, I'm in agreement with uh, Mr. Shu on this. As it turns out, the financing that was made available to the State Supervisors Association is not constitutionally allowable, so we have to go another avenue. This is the avenue that I think is the best path and the least uh, money impact on the county in the long run. The simple explanation also is, as Mr. Shuler now knows more about voting equipment than he ever thought he probably would, but the simple explanation for this is that the state is buying the car and the car has no engine. And the $29,000 is the purchase of the engine. Uh, all the new ballot counting equipment that the HAVA funds will buy for the county um, will not communicate with the existing hardware, the Unity system that we have in the office. It's a completely different system. And our equipment is over 15 years old and in election terms and technology terms today, it is an antique. And so the state is earnestly warning counties like ours to upgrade their equipment, and that's the reason that they're making the HAVA grant funds available to a handful 
of rural counties. So, yes, I am in agreement, and uh, I would appreciate the board's support on this. We need to assure the public that we will conduct um, completely um, accurate elections. And speed is not so much the factor uh, in election night as accuracy is. But we cannot conduct fair and complete elections if we are operating under the cloud of our equipment, you know, potentially failing. So um, I would leave that with y'all and the pleasure of the board this morning. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to ask Michael Marone or, or Alan or Lauren to call over there, find out exactly how much money we have in capital outlay. $93,000. We do have $93,000. There's more than that in there, but there's $93,000 in unencumbered funds available. $93,000. Yes, ma'am. And right. that's 29000 from the, I, I'd rather just go ahead and do it all on a loan. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I got one you? comment I'd like to make, Mr. Chairman. You know, I don't understand. I understand uh, the county's got to put in $29,783.50. And I've addressed this with Attorney Schuler in the past on this issue. But I don't understand why the, the state just don't give us the money to buy the equipment. The county puts in their 20 and, and it's done. We don't have to do it alone. I mean, I don't understand. And I just want the, the board and, the, and the, the, uh, the taxpayers of the county to realize but I don't believe I believe there's something in the mix here to where we may get the first year's funding and not get the rest, so we're gonna have to bear the cost, and that's on the taxpayer. Because if they have the money in hand but won't write a check for the equipment and let us write a check for the balance and be done with this and have to go and take out a loan, I'm not saying that I'm opposed to it. I just that's my opinion that I don't understand why if they have the money in the bank but they want to carry it out over five years when they can write this, this company a check for $81,000 or eighty-three or whatever it is, we write them a check for twenty-nine out of capital outlay and you're done with this. But now we're going to have to go and take out a loan, which to me puts the taxpayer on the hook. Uh, maybe that don't come to fruition, maybe it does, but it, it just really don't make sense to me if they got the money why we don't just go out and purchase this equipment outright and be done with it. But, you know, it's a pleasure to the board. I'm not saying I'm against it, I'm just saying Something don't smell clean in this deal to me. They're not going to give us all the money. I don't think well, so either. I agree with Commissioner Parrish. You know, the state wants us to have this updated equipment, and they've got the grant funds available now. Why don't they just purchase it outright instead of putting us on the hook for this? So I, I completely agree with Commissioner Parrish, but it'll be, you know, my job and, and to lobby, you know, our delegation, our state delegation, to make sure that uh, this uh, grant continues to be funded every year. And we'll do our very best in trying to make that happen. Of course, there'll be you know, 11 other counties involved, and they'll be lobbying their legislators. And I believe that the count, that the state will, in good faith, they've made this good faith uh, statement to us, an agreement to us that they will do it, and I believe they will. But I, at the same time, I agree with you. It puts the taxpayers and the county in a difficult position uh, to put the outlay, you know, for this initial funding uh, of the equipment. So I, I hear you, and, and I agree with you.